I had so many bills, I just couldn't pay them. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was a failure and I felt hopeless. I didn't know where to turn. And then I found Rick West and he gave me a plan and he assured me I'd be okay. And it actually really worked. Now I'm at peace, my bills are paid. I feel like my old self again. I got a fresh start. Don't you need a fresh start? Get a plan that really works. Call Rick West, debtfreeohio.com. I was struggling with bills I couldn't pay, afraid that I wouldn't be able to feed my kids. Rick West gave me a plan and it really worked. I got a fresh start. Get your fresh start. Call Rick West, debtfreeohio.com. certified consumer bankruptcy specialist. I've been practicing bankruptcy law here in the Dayton area since 1986. I've had the pleasure and privilege of representing probably over 20,000 families, helping them to reorganize their finances, wipe out debt, and rebuild their credit. I've got offices in Cincinnati, Dayton, Huber Heights, and now Columbus. Generally, when someone is facing more debt than they can handle, they're looking for different options. There's an awful lot of information on the internet, debt management programs, commercials on TV. It seems like everywhere you look, there's somebody trying to tell you, somebody trying to sell you some sort of a program to help you with your debt. The one that um, a lot of people will look at last, but probably should look at first, is bankruptcy. Now, if a family comes to me and they've got more bills than they can handle, we're going to go through all of these different options. If they don't qualify or what doesn't make sense is a non-bankruptcy option, then we're looking at Chapter 7 and 13. Most consumers are eligible for one or the other or maybe both. And that's going to wipe out all or part of their debts, reorganize their finances, and bring their expenses into line with their budget so they, they can go forward and start rebuilding their credit. People think, in many cases, incorrectly, that filing a bankruptcy is a long-term detriment to their credit, but that's not true if it's handled properly. And so as a consumer credit counselor, I have programs to help my clients recover quickly. Bankruptcy is here to help the common consumer recover from, a lot of times, things that weren't their fault, things beyond their control, got them behind the eight ball, bankruptcy is a way out. A good test would be to honestly sit down and take a look at the finances. Most people that I counsel have never made a written budget, and that is where we want to start. List your income, list your expenses. If you don't think within a year to two to three years, based upon the income and expenses that you have, that you're going to be able to significantly reduce your debt, that's when you better talk to someone who can help you out. Chapter 7 is not a payment plan. It's where the unsecured debt, generally credit cards, medical bills, personal loans, payday loans, those kinds of debts are discharged, which means legally erased, with no payment whatsoever. Most people uh, will qualify for a 7 if their income for their family size is below a preset threshold that's what the means test is all about. All right. What, what would that be? Uh, for a family size of four, it's about 40, excuse me, $83,000, mm -hmm. uh, more or less. And that number is adjusted. So if a family makes that much or less, family size of four, mm -hmm. then they probably are going to qualify for a Chapter 7. Now, Chapter 13s are payment plans, but that 
really is not the whole story because a payment plan in Chapter 13 might pay as little as 1% of the unsecured debt. Now think about this. If a Chapter 7 is a 0% payment plan, how different is that plan from a Chapter 13 plan that pays back 1%? So Chapter 13 is a payment plan, but it could be a payment plan that pays very low percentage. Chapter 13s have many advantages compared to Chapter 7, and so when people think of Chapter 13 as a payment plan that pays back all their debts over time, that's really not accurate. And Jeff can tell you that most of the, the payment plans that he'll see, they don't pay more than a couple cents on the dollar. And, and that's probably one of the, the first questions that most people are going to ask when they consider bankruptcy because they've heard all these horror stories about um, losing houses and cars. In fact, if they look it up on the internet, they, they see Chapter 7 referred to as a liquidation bankruptcy mm -hmm. where all of the debtor's non-exempt assets are liquidated for the benefit of creditors, but that almost never happens. There are laws called exemption laws <clears throat> in Ohio that protect our ownership in our property, the equity in property, so that almost never are you going to see somebody lose a house or a car in a Chapter 7 because of the amount of equity ownership they have. Now, that being said, in a Chapter 7, they, they need to be current on their payments. And that leads back to what uh, Mr. Kellner was saying, is if you're behind on your house and you're in foreclosure, a Chapter 7 is not going to keep that house from being lost to foreclosure. You will need a Chapter 13 to do that. But just because you file a bankruptcy, no, you're not going to lose your house or your car necessarily. Oftentimes there is a choice. Uh, okay. I think many people come in to see me with an idea that it's better to file Chapter 7. The reason for that is they think a no payment plan is better than a payment plan. Why do they think that? Well, a lot of it is psychological. Okay. A lot of times people feel that, you know, by golly, if I've got to, if I've got to file a bankruptcy and, you know, and that's like the biggest negative that they can imagine, mm -hmm. then if they have to swallow that bitter pill, then they want to walk away with no payments because that's what's best a for A really them. clean start. Right. Okay. But that is not always what's really best for them. And let me give you a real simple example. Most of us are going to have a car payment most of the time. Mm -hmm. Very seldom are you going to have an un, uh, a, a car paid off for long anyway. If someone comes to me with a car that is more than a couple of years old, two and a half years old, and they have over mortgaged the car, let's say they owe 10 grand on this car mm -hmm. and it's only worth about five. And I see this every day. In a Chapter 7, they can discharge all of their unsecured debt, their medical bills, credit cards, personal loans, payday loans, with no payment at all, but they're going to have to pay $10,000 for that car because that's the agreement. Mm -hmm. You can't modify it in a Chapter 7 under most circumstances. But if I take that same car and I put it into a Chapter 13, I can pay what the car is worth. And that's what Mr. Kellner was saying. They're paid out to what the car is, the value of the car well, That is. seems like a real deal, doesn't it? It is an incredible deal. Yeah. There's more, though, because okay. imagine this car loan's got an interest rate of, say, 20%. Mm -hmm. If I take that car into a Chapter 13, I'm only going to pay $5,000, and I'm going to pay that at about 6% interest. So I just cut their car payment in half. They're keeping the same car that they drove in to see me in. And I'm wiping out all of their other debt at the 1% level. Not zero in a Chapter 7, but 1% is pretty close. And so that's why, even though somebody may come in to see me thinking a Chapter 7 is in their best interest, a Chapter 13 will do a better job for them. I had so many bills, I didn't know what to do. And then I found Rick West, and he gave me a plan that really worked. Now, I have a fresh start. Don't you need a fresh start? Get a plan that really works. Call Rick West, DebtFreeOhio.com. I was struggling with bills I couldn't pay. 
I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to feed my kids. I cried a lot, I couldn't sleep, I felt hopeless. Then I met with Rick West. He had a plan and it really worked. The next thing I knew, my credit was improving and I was able to get a car. I got a fresh start. Don't you need a fresh start? Get a plan that really works. Call Rick West, DebtFreeOhio.com. On the internet too, a lot of times people, Mike, will come in to see me and, and it's clear to me they've done their internet research. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think that's good. A, a lot of times they get a good basic background understanding of what their options are before they come to see me. Sometimes they get it wrong because some of the stuff is complicated and, and they don't understand it right or its application is, is not okay. something they understand. But I always joke with them and say, look, I go, to, I go to WebMD before I see my doc, but I go to my doc and I listen to my doctor when I make mm -hmm. these important decisions. The, we have Mr. Rick West, who is a noted, is that a good uh, term, noted bankruptcy attorney, famous bankruptcy attorney. How does that sound? Well, what, would, what would you like? I'm proud to serve and you can call me whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> As my, as my granddaughter says, anything but late for dinner. Absolutely. Okay. But anyway, all kidding aside, Rick has been uh, very helpful in this field in the community for as long as he said he was back in the 80s, right? Over 30 years. Yeah. The student loans are a problem. And because they're not discharged in most cases, what we often see is essentially a sequencing of debt. And what I mean by that is, unless, as Jeff said, you enter into this IDR while you're in a bankruptcy, which is something you can do sometimes, your bankruptcy is going to place your student loans into a state of administrative forbearance. What that means is you would not make payments on your chapter, or your student loans rather, mm -hmm. while you're in your bankruptcy. Yet they're not discharged, they're waiting for you at the end. So while you're in your bankruptcy, you're wiping out everything else that's dischargeable. So when you get out, those, those monthly payments are gone. Those mm -hmm. debts are discharged. But then the student loan kicks in and you begin to pay that. So if you imagine a payment plan, maybe this is your chapter 13 payment plan. It's wiping out all of your other debt, paying off your cars. You get to the end. Now you've got some money in your budget to start working on your, chat, on your student loans. So that's an effective approach that we've been using for a long time. To get the best plan requires an awful lot of thought and experience in doing Chapter 13 work. And, and the, the best example that uh, comes to mind is someone comes to me, they have been experiencing financial difficulties for some time. In fact, it generally takes six to 12 months of thinking about coming to see me before someone actually makes the appointment. So they come in and they've got this old car and other things in their um, financial life that suggest to me that a chapter 13 is gonna serve them best. That's gonna be their best tool. But I'm looking at this person with the old car and I'm thinking to myself, this car is not gonna last for five years. Mm -hmm. Now, if I wasn't thinking about it and I just plug all this information into the formula, I'm gonna get a chapter 13 plan that will be acceptable to the court and it will be approved by the trustee, and so off we go. But I know that during this five-year plan, that car's gonna die. So I'm gonna tell my client, look, you need to get another car. So part of the plan, my plan, is going to be to set this client up for a successful outcome in his Chapter 13, and many times that means we're gonna replace a car so he has reliable transportation that will last while this plan is going on and not a bomb that's going to explode in the middle of it. The reason that this is important is because you have to not be, you have to be able to see more than just the person's now. You've got to be able to predict what's going to happen in the future. Sometimes that means taking into consideration a health issue. Sometimes that means taking into consideration what's going to happen with their kids. Sometimes they have 
changes in their income due to retirement plan uh, changes. Sometimes they retire in the middle of the plan. You can actually forecast these things. There's so much that goes into a well-crafted Chapter 13 that I, I can't imagine um, someone wanting to go to a general practitioner, someone who doesn't do this stuff regularly, because there's just so many benefits that a person can get out of a Chapter 13 if enough thought is put into its construction. The number one myth that I see and have always seen in the 30 plus years I've done this is that bankruptcy is going to ruin a person's credit for a long time. I've had people come in, Mike, and tell me, well, I know I have to file Mr. West, but I, I know I'll never have a house again. I'll never be able to buy a car. I'll have to live a cash life. And nothing could be further from the truth. Not only further from the truth, it's the wrong approach after a bankruptcy. One of the things that I offer my clients as a certified credit counselor is a program to help them rebuild their credit quickly after filing a bankruptcy to discharge their debt. If, if you follow a certain program and you take certain steps and you do it the right way, it's possible to recover credit quickly after bankruptcy. My clients typically end up with credit scores of 650 or better only one year after their discharge. People delay coming to see me for financial advice for years because they're afraid that it's going to kill their credit and they want to be able to have all the things that, that credit means, you know, a nice car, a house or something. And, and it's sad because that's just not true. It, it, years ago, it was a lot more difficult to rebuild credit after bankruptcy, and I think that's where the origin of this myth lies. Most myths have some kernel of truth in their origin, at least, and I think that's what's happening here. But if people knew the truth, they would get better advised and probably be looking at or considering bankruptcy options a lot sooner than they, than they do now in many cases. It's not part of a qualification for bankruptcy, and it's not part of bankruptcy law. And that's why I've found that most of my colleagues who practice bankruptcy law do not address it uh, mm -hmm. at all. Uh, do you address it? You talked about uh, being a certified credit counselor. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. Um, do you assess it in that then? I do. I think okay. that in order to provide a full financial recovery for my clients, I want to address their debt, of course, and oftentimes bankruptcy is the best tool to do that. But there's also a program to rebuild credit. And I also want to teach them things that oftentimes they don't know about their credit score. I have had lots of clients, Mike, come in to see me with credit scores over 700. Their payment record is perfect but they've been doing it by robbing Peter to pay Paul and borrowing from family and robbing their retirement. And so it is not uncommon for me to see someone coming into my office with a perfect payment record and a 700 plus credit score. Now it's a house of cards, not going to be able to sustain it, but I see it all the time. And the reason people do it is to maintain that credit score. When I explain to them, yeah, your bankruptcy is going to cause your score to go down, but we can get it right back up there in a relatively short period of time, it's, it's like, it's like a, a new revelation to them and they are then more willing to look at the option that really they need to, to look at, the bankruptcy option, but they were afraid to because they thought it would be a permanent end to their credit. There is a means test that you, um, you go to to start that question. So if your income is below a certain threshold, and for a family size of four, it's about $83,000. So if your gross, and that's not take home, that's gross. If your gross income is under that, then you're probably gonna qualify for a chapter seven. But you would also probably qualify for a chapter 13. So in that sense, you could do either one, and the right one would be dependent upon what your personal circumstances are and what you're trying to accomplish. Now, if your income is above the median, you probably are not going to qualify for a Chapter 7. That's not necessarily the case, but you probably won't. And you would be looking at only being able to file a Chapter 13. But as I've explained earlier in the show, 
a Chapter 13 might pay as little as 1% back to your credit cards and medical bills. So it would be, I like to say, it's the functional equivalent of a Chapter 7. Now, if your income is well below the median, a lot less than the average, and you might find that you can't afford to be in a Chapter 13. So I sometimes see sad cases where the income due to medical uh, disability or loss of job is, has now gone so low that you can't afford to keep the house. So even though Chapter 13s are good tools to keep the house, if you can't afford it, then that option won't be available to you. Maybe the best you can do is file a Chapter 7 and wipe out the mortgage debt and start over with the lower income. I see that regularly, and the answer is the law does not require a spouse to file with a spouse. So I can be married and file my own bankruptcy and not involve my spouse. It wouldn't impair my spouse's credit. My spouse would not be involved. I don't need my spouse's consent, permission, or cooperation. My ability to file a bankruptcy is not affected by my marital status, in other words. Now, that being said, the qualifications for uh, eligibility to file bankruptcy might involve the household income, and my spouse's income would be part of that, but also I would be able to deduct from that spouse's income the separate debts that my spouse would have. So it's a little more complicated when you have a married couple that wants to file one and not the other, but we do it all the time and there's, there's no legal impediment to doing that. You can. I've probably discharged hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxes. Mm -hmm. If you meet certain tests, <clears throat> then you can discharge taxes in bankruptcy. What a lot of people don't know is even if you're not able to discharge them, bankruptcy often is a great way to pay them because if I file a Chapter 13, I can pay my tax. A lot of my tax I'm not going to pay any of the penalty on. And, and the tax payments that I'm making are going to be paid at no interest. Compare that to an IRS payment plan. If you're in a payment plan with the IRS, you have to pay the penalties and you're going to pay interest on the unpaid balance of your taxes. If I take that same tax debt and I put it into one of Jeff's Chapter 13s, there will be no penalties. Well, they'll be treated as an unsecured creditor, mm -hmm. probably pennies on the dollar, and there's no interest paid on the uh, tax I pay to the IRS. The effective uh, result of this is I can probably get out of my tax in half the time at half the cost, Chapter 13 compared to an IRS payment plan. It's very effective to pay taxes in okay. Chapter 13.